I've put my lovely teapot and cup with a light on the side so I can get a nice contrast. I'm just going to briefly tell you about the materials I'm using. I have a bit of Bockingford watercolour paper here, 300 grams, and I'm using this lovely tape. It's framing tape. Seen it. it seems to work much better than masking tape. Masking tape, when you use quite a lot of water, tends to lift up and I'm really enjoying this framing tape to keep the paper nice and secure. I'm going to just use three colours in my painting, a red, yellow and a blue. I've got Oriolan here, which is a Daniel Smith one for my yellow, a manganese blue, which is an M. Graham, and a permanent carmine, which is Windsor and Newton. And I'm going to do the whole painting just using the three colours. My brushes, I have a lovely, I've got two of them actually, beautiful Da Vinci uh, squirrel mops. They are so gorgeous for painting with watercolour. Just a couple of years ago I discovered them and I prefer them to uh, sable because sable tends to lose their points so much more quickly than these brushes. And these brushes hold so much liquid, really enjoy them. I also have a uh, squirrel uh, sword brush. I'm not using it in this video, but um, I love this this brush as well. A uh, rigger, and I have a little acrylic brush, which is a nylon brush, which I use for lifting dry paint, really useful. I use a sponge for wiping off excess liquid for my brush. It's really useful just having it sitting here rather than a cloth because I always seem to put my cloth down somewhere and I can't find it. So the sponge is great. In preparation for my painting, I do a little bit of a drawing. I want to get the uh, shapes right and the uh, values. And this really helps me when I come to paint, I know what I understand and I know what I'm going to paint. Uh, I get the drawing right and I can actually do a tracing and then transfer the tracing onto my watercolor paper. It, it just helps the watercolour paper because if you do a lot of rubbing out on your watercolour paper you can actually damage the surface and so I prefer to do it this way. I have th my three puddles of colours and I'm painting on my first layer. I have Oriolan, um, Permanent Carmine and Manganese Blue and I'm just going to paint over the whole of the paper except for some highlight areas. I prefer permanent carmine to alizarin crimson here when I'm mixing on the paper. Alizarin crimson can be really uh, aggressive and take over the other colours and uh, permanent carmine is much more well behaved. I'm just adding my three colours onto the paper. They're very wet and juicy so they will dry quite pale but at least I've got some colour to get going with in this first layer. I've got to try and keep the uh, washed edges uh, damp so that I don't get too many hard lines. The only hard lines I want are where the highlights are. Where do I decide, how do I decide what colours to put where? Um, I'm kind of just basically using the yellow for the lighter areas. The, the red for the mid-tones and the blue for the shadow areas. But of course they're all mixing on the paper and it doesn't really matter. I can also lift out some of the pa paint if it's in the wrong place. I also want quite a sort of mottled effect. I don't want a too smooth effect over the paper. I like to have the a little bit of character going here. I'm just painting that sort of shadow side there of the, of the cup and round the saucer. There's a nice chink of light there that isn't a highlight, but I want to try and keep it light. But I'm just trying to cover the whole paper. Getting into the saucer there with some colour. And then I'm just that little chink of light. Well, I've put some yellow there, but it's quite bright. But I can lift it off. Let's try and lift off some now. I'll probably have to wait till it's dry to lift off some. I'm going to warm up the cup a little bit while it's still all wet. 
add some stronger colour now that I've covered most of the paper. Now I'll just let it mix a bit. Now there's that shadow in the cup. Um, that inside of the cup, half of it is in a shadow area and the other half is in the light. So I love to try and get that sorted. And there's a lovely chink of highlight on the edge of the cup. And I'm, and I'm just uh, softening some edges there. I don't want the transition to be hard. And I'm going to have, I've wet my brush and I'm just lifting out there on the handle of the cup, lifting out a bit of paint and softening that highlight area there. And I think that layer is just about done. And I'm going to let this dry now before I start on my next layer. So my first layer is now dry and I'm going to paint on my second layer. And I'm coming in uh, doing a little bit of negative painting uh, around the edge of the pot where the pot hi hits the light. And it's lovely because it actually shows the shape of the pot. And the light areas on the pot there, um, I can leave unpainted, it's, it's the right value already, so that's great. I'm just painting on the inside of the handle, making sure on the outside and the inside the colours match. And there's a bit of a shadow on the handle there that I'm going to paint in now, just so it becomes soft and there's not too many hard edges there. There's a little shadow there on the top of the handle. Now I'm going to carry on on the other side of the teapot, the shadow side. So I'm just softening the uh, bottom of the uh, wash there. I don't want a hard line there. And I'm going to bring it through behind the uh, teapot, but I'm going to continue the shadow onto the teapot at this stage. I'm not going to create too many hard lines if I can on that side. Now this is quite a big wash because I'm painting on dry paper and I need to keep that edge going. So I've got an edge at the top and then I've got an edge on the teapot. I'm going to come round the spout. So I'm watching that paper. Um, it's, while it's glistening I know that it's still wet and it's okay to keep, to let it stand for a little bit. I'm actually just dampening that area so that it doesn't create the hard line at the top there. Now let's concentrate on the teapot. I want most of the shadows to be soft there, but there's one sort of line across the top of the, the teapot, which is quite nice, and I'm going to try and keep that as a hard line. Ah, keep going with the, the edges of the wash. Coming round the handle of the cup there, I want to keep that light. Warming up the shadow of the teapot with some red. More negative painting. I've got to bring the, the wash around before it dries too much. Yeah, I'll soften some of the edges on the teapot. And then continue the shadow under the teapot with the shadow on the teapot at this stage. Keep adding some paint while it's wet, it's fine. My brush is very soft so it doesn't lift up the paint, the dry paint that's underneath, which can be a real problem. It can make mud when you do that. So it's really good to have a lovely soft squirrel mop brush. Uh, I've just actually, I need a bit of light area there, so I'm lifting off some of the paint. It is kind of damp, but I'm, I'm, I'm also wetting it and lifting it off with my tissue because it's not quite coming off quite as much as I want because I want to have a, a shadow there from the teapot. That's right, I want a contrast there. And then bring the shadow onto the teacup. And round that chink of light 
on the side of the saucer. And then make a soft shadow on that cup and the saucer. I've got to keep in mind where the highlights are and the lighter areas and try and leave them. So those areas that we painted in the first wash will be left unpainted except for pattern that's going to come over them. I'm painting that shadow area and I also don't want too many hard lines so I'm also just softening some of those lines of the shadow. So it's like a broken uh, edge. Now the shadow inside the cup, I need to establish that a bit more. And I want it, the, the, the weight of the shadow to be at the bottom of that shadow. So that's why I've just lifted the board a little bit. I normally paint flat, but lift it when I need to, to stick something under it. And I think that's just about done for the um, second layer. So I'm going to just finish here, just tidy up a little bit, soften some edges. And then I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to soften that bit there. I think that's it. This is my third layer now. And I want to reassess the shape of the teapot. There's a lovely sort of uh, change of tone as the teapot rounds away from the light area and also as it goes round the corner. I don't want a hard edge there that looks like a cutout. So I'm just trying to create an, an illusion of three dimension with the um, soft pinky colour there. Of course I'm going to be painting the pattern on top of it but it's good to try and get the shape right. I need to do the top as well, the top of the teapot, where it flattens out. That's right. Now I'm just painting a little bit there, uh, maintaining a bit of an edge, bringing it out from the background, continuing to soften that um, edge of the uh, red there and then not managing very well so I just give it a good old dab and then just creating the shape of the spout. It's more in a shadow area. Just before I start the pattern, I'm just trying to sort of a little bit of a darker area there on the top of the teapot. Always doing negative painting to keep the shapes. And then I'm just taking my little nylon brush and softening that edge there. It's, it's not a hard edge. I'm now painting the pattern on the cup and the teapot. I've speeded it up a little bit because it can get a little bit of tedious because it takes a bit of, of time to do it. And I've got to try and do these ellipses. I can see the ellipse on my cup isn't quite right. Let's just get the pattern on the front of the teapot. I don't want to create a pattern that is just exactly as the, it is. I don't want a photographic view. I want a sort of essence of pattern, which isn't so easy, but I just will actually soften the edges. I definitely don't want uh, the pattern going through that highlight there. I want it to fade into the highlight. Then you've got to get the sort of the rounded feel of the teapot. So you've got to make sure that your pattern shows that rounded feel. So it's bits of sort of pink flowers, some greenery and some sort of stalks. 
just soften as I go. And there's that ellipse again at the bottom of the teapot. It's so difficult because you, even though you might have drawn it right, when you come to paint, just one little crack of paint can send your lips looking really peculiar. Just decorating the top of the teapot and then on the handle there's a bit of a pattern there. And now let's do the cup. It is quite a balance to know how much and how little to put in there. Apologize for turning my painting round, but it's the only way I can get paint those ellipses. I have to get it painting sort of vertically when I'm doing an ellipse. Just painting the sort of getting the shadows underneath the teapot. And I think I need to re-establish the shadow area on the side of the cup and the pot. Just softening those shadow areas and adding some between the pot and the cup. Now I want to take my little nylon brush and lift out some of those reflected light in the shadow area on the teapot. I love those little areas, it really shows off porcelain well. Now I'm just sort of bringing, taking my rigger and I have a few lines to put in. So let's have a go with the top of the teapot. And on the edge of the lid there, there's a quite a dark line. I don't want to stripe all the way along. It's quite hard, it's another balancing act. Just a few stripes here and there. This edge of this cup has got a nice dark area, but actually I can see there's a bit of paint there. So I'm lifting the bit of paint. It's it's um, messing up my lips there, so I'll just come back to that in a minute. Let's do the edge of the saucer here in, see I'm just doing it in little bits, not all the way along. It's as if the light is catching it here and there. Adding a bit more to that teapot. Now let's have a go with that edge of the cup. to get that shape right. <laughs> I think that'll do. Just add a little bit more paint to it. Then a bit more on the edge of the saucer. And then maybe establish, yeah, a little bit of shadow there in the spout of the teapot. and under the teapot and under the cup again. A little bit more dark. There's a nice little dark line under there. Yep, still sorting out that little curve there. Now I've decided that the shadow area on the um, right hand side is darker than the area on the left where I wanted a similar tone. So I'm just re-establishing a bit of background tone there. And as long as you sort of paint with similar colours that's, that's underneath, um, it'll work out all right. You won't get too much mud. So I mean that's had a few layers on it now. Now's the time to reassess the painting and see what needs to be done. If there are any little bits to be lifted out, pieces of paint in the wrong place. So let's have a look and see what else I need to do. That balance looks a little bit better. I might add a little bit more dark to that area. I'm just getting that curve right. I think it's just about done. Lifting a few crunchy bits there. I think that's just about it.
here is the finished painting. I do hope you've really enjoyed watching me paint porcelain, paint my grandmother's teapot and cup.